Some of you newcomers, maybe, you know, we can do the ground up, uh, the ground foundation. So such things are necessary because first thing as a Buddhist, foundation of the being a Buddhist is to have a belief in the karma, you know, cause and condition. That is the foundation. When you have a belief in the karma, you know, then all other will slowly kind of seem to make sense. If you do not believe in the karma, then you know, many things which we do, whether it's offering, whether it's prostration, etc., you know, will not make that much of a sense. So firstly, it is the belief, when we have a belief in the karma, then I think it is called, the, you know, the, the, we call it the yang takvita, or the one who has the right view. And then after that, you know, then we talk about the samsaric renunciation, etc. Then we are entering the Theravadan level of renunciation, and the refuge comes. And then the Bodhicitta, and then the Vajrayana. Then when we enter the Vajrayana, then we start talking about, the, you know, in the Mahayana, we start talking about the six paramitas, the generosity, etc. And then the, in the Vajrayana, we talk, start talking about the, the union. Union of emptiness and appearance, you know, and like His Holiness was saying, you know, the, about the non-conceptual, yet you are doing, you know, the offering, etc., but without with, while having a realization that what you're offering is also not inherently existing, you know, that's also a union. So, mm, uh, and the Tara practiced, you know, is a kind of uh, when you enter the Vajrayana, especially within the, you know, the, within the Drupa lineage, for example, it's within the Sarma teaching. There are within the Vajrayana, there are said to be four levels of Vajrayana, pra Vajrayana practice. The first one is called the action tantra. The second one is called the chugyu, which means the behavior. And then the yoga, yoga tantra. And then the great yoga tantra, nenjur lamegyu, you know, the un unsurpassable yoga tantra. And uh, these and these practices also, you can. It's almost like a, you know, like a, the, you know, the action tantra, which is the Tara practice, belongs to. It's, it is kind of. Um, you know, the, in a way you can say kind of uh, closer to conservativeness of the Buddhism, you know, the Mahayana Buddhism. For example, you know, the, as Tara practitioner in the Action Tantra, you have to, supposed to keep very clean. You are not supposed to eat meat, nor eat egg, nor even offer an you know, offer egg to, you know, the, the, the Tara, the practice during the practice. And uh, no alcohol, and you know, the, basically the, the, it's a very much you know, still very much, you know, you are practicing the visualizations, etc. But in terms of behavior, it's very, very close with the Mahayana and very kind of the strictness, discipline is very much recommended. Now when you reach, you know, the certain higher level of the, you know, the young, like a young tik, etc. If we start to discriminate saying that, oh, you know, this offering we can offer, this we cannot offer, you know, this is clean, this is a dirty, the moment you have a concept, you are far away from the Dzogchen, 
far away from the Mahamudra. So the moment you have a concept that something can be offered or cannot be offered, we are assuming that because we believe that something inherently exists. Right? Because if something inherently exists, that is why we are saying this is something dirty, because dirty is something that inherently exists. Right? So, you know, and if dirty is something inherently existing, I feel that recycling will not be possible. The reason why recycling is possible, you know, we drink something and then it comes out into out of you know our toilet, etc. Then either it's recycled by the machine, or it is goes into the ocean and then it goes into the I don't know vapor and the cloud, and then the cloud comes to Himalaya and then we drink the Himalayan spring water, you know, right? And we are very happy to drink the Himalayan spring water, but our own toilet is considered very dirty. You know? And, uh, but somehow I think we human beings, I always feel that we human beings always like to, you know, hide our, we like to, you know, kind of delude ourselves, right? We like to pretend that nothing, toilet doesn't come out of our, you know, we don't do toilet. Maybe that's why we always like to have a very beautiful bathroom, you know. Then we can pretend that we are not in the bathroom, we are in the living room, you know, watching television and we ignore what we are doing, you know, let's pretend that. The reason why a so-called toilet can also be recycled into water is because something, there is no single atom or entity called a dirty that is inherently existent. Because of the condition, cause and condition, you can say whatever, you know, that it is dirty, it is clean, etc. But, you know, the reason why, the, you know, it can be all clean, can become dirty, dirty can become clean, is because nothing has inherent existent. If something is inherently existing, it cannot be changed. So that's why at the young thick level, even offering wise also, you know, there's nothing that cannot be offered because everything is emptiness. Everything is nothing, not inherently existing. So, you know, so that's why in the deities also, in the young thick you don't have, but in the higher deities you have, even have the, the yabhyum, you know, the male and female Buddhas joined together, which you will not find in the, the action tantra, like the Tara, etc. You will not find. So, the, you know, the, even the, you know, the, the reason, you know, the Yab and Yum also, the Yab, the male Buddha represents the existing and the method, and the female Buddha represents the non-existing part, and two of them joined together means everything is union by nature. All the forms are union because everything is empty yet appearing. All the sounds are union of emptiness and appearance. All emotions are union of emptiness and appearance. So in order to emphasize that very kind of in your face, you know, that is why in the higher level of Tantra days, you know, the male and female Buddhas are joined. And most of us usually we do not kind of understand that. We like to think that, oh, the, the, our guru is the male Buddha, you know. And the female Buddha we try to ignore, you know, if possible we try to, you know. That is like maybe his secret girlfriend that we try to, you know, not to look and try not to think about it too much, you know. It's okay, it's okay, you know. But actually, actual the fact is that, you know, the male Buddha is also your guru, and the female Buddha is equally your guru. It is just that the male represents existing part, and the female Buddha represents a non-existing part, and two of them together represents that. All the phenomena are from the beginningless time in the union of emptiness, appearance, and etc. In order to highlight it, but in the, uh, you know, the, in the action tantra, like Tara practice, etc., the union is, union is there, but it's not so highlighted. For example, you know, the green Tara holds a lotus. The lotus represents, you know, the, lot the rep lotus, you know, represents the, the male part, you know, the existing part. And thus, for example, you know, sometimes the, the Dakinis also, you know, they're, they're holding, a, a, you know, the, just the trident. The trident represents the, the male, the existing part. You know, even the Vajra, if from the, because from the, the Tara practice itself, we start holding the Vajra and the bell. Bell represents emptiness, Vajra represents the existing part, and when we start holding this together, we are a Vajra and a practitioner that you know, understands the meaning of the union. So that is why the, the, you know, the, the action tantra, the Tara practice, etc., is the first level of practice. And in the India, I believe also there were diff four different castes in the early day. The king, you know, the, the Brahmin, which are said to be the, you know, the, who believe very much in cleanliness. And then the king's caste, and the ordinary, and then the, the low caste, so that they do all the, you know, the selling the meat and cleaning, etc. So that is why also they say the teaching was also the four yanas are said to suitable for them. So in the, from, the samsaric, from the samsaric point of view, 
the one who has a very strong idea of uh, what is clean, what is dirty, what is, is set, is considered you know, very proper. But from the, the uh, nature point of view, the more concept you have of what is clean and what is dirty, more we are stuck in the samsara. And more you are suffering. Because you, we have a very fanatic view of, you know, rather than understanding that what we find desirable is the manifestation of your desire. When we like somebody, that person we see as a friendly or beautiful, or etc. And the very same person, when we hate it, in our, ha our hatred makes us see that person as an enemy or undesirable, etc. Right? And this is very easy. And this is a guy, you know, but I just, just that we don't analyze our life. Just imagine that right now you are married to somebody, and there is somebody that, you know, somebody who really, you know, hates your wife. Know, or your husband, you will equally hate that person, you know, even though you don't know that person, you don't know him, and he doesn't know you, you know, but you will hate that person, he or she, because he is, you know, he or she is bad to your wife, and you are attached to your wife, and anything that, attract, you know, where, whenever we are attached to something, that attachment makes us project that person or object as a desirable or beautiful. And anything that is obstacle to our desirable becomes our enemy. Right? So then, you know, as long as you have that, as long as you love your wife or your husband, whoever is bad to your husband or wife, you will hate that person. You might even kill that person, even though you don't even know his name or her name. But if something happens between you and your husband or wife, that you divorce your husband or wife, you know, suddenly, you know, you don't hate that person anymore, right? You might even get together with him and say, talk about how bad your wife was, you know? Yeah, you know, yes, yes, you know. Before I used to hate you because I thought, you know, that, you know, my wife was right, but now you are right, you know? You will come talk together and talk about how bad your husband wife was. Because your attachment, you know, to your husband has, you know, has gone. You know, so the hatred automatically goes because, you know, the, it is the desire that projects friend, and is is the obstacle to desire that projects, you know, in the enemy, you know, and etc. So anyway, mm, you know, so so that is why, from a social point of view, someone who is the more stronger the concept, oh, he's very clean, very nice. This is very dirty, you know, etc from the normal point of view, yes, and we are supposed to respect that because right now we are at this level, so definitely, you know, we have to, you know, for example, when we are doing the Tara practice, we have to very much keep ourselves clean. Offering has to be clean. Why? Because we are at that level. But even though we have to respect that level, we have to break that level in order to go up, right? But in while we order to go up breaking that level, we have to respect where we are too. Some people tell me, can I do my mantra in the bathroom? And I always say, would you like to have your first date in the bathroom? You know? You know, is that your, you know, have you reached that level? If you have, then no problem. You know, no problem for the Tara. Right? It is not that it is nothing to do with the Tara or a Guru Patna Sambhava. It has to do with the, our level and the practice that we are doing. It is not that Tara is a vegetarian and Guru Patma Sambhava is a non-vegetarian. It just means that, you know, there can be, there are some practices, I'm sure, it may not have been translated in Himalaya, but there may be some Tara practice which are of the, the higher, higher yoga.